Take, take a deep, deep breath. breath. Notice, Notice any, any tension, tension in, in your body. body. Take another deep breath and relax that tension. And using the intention of allowance, allow everything to be as it is. Find no fault, no problem with anything exactly as it is, exactly as it occurs. Make nothing wrong, no detail of it. Allow for all to be as it is. That is relaxation. That is resting as awareness. Then allow the tuning fork, which is your body, to begin to harmonize with the space that is offered. the vibration that is offered into the space. And in that silence, allow all to be as it is. And the deeper layers of self to rise to the surface. For these aspects of your mind and your heart to find no judgment there as they arise but instead a welcoming space, an allowing space that feels free to give the thoughts and emotions back to life, back to source, back to wherever they came from. You have the intention be to find a profound peace within yourself that cannot be shook this morning. And if something arises that distracts you, Merely acknowledge it. Meet it with no judgment. Instead, allow it. Let, Let it, it pass, pass or, or give it, it back, back to whatever, whatever created, created it with no, no personal, personal identification, identification to it. it. And relaxing, relaxing deeper again into, into that, that space that is not visible yet it is so obviously here as the space within which my voice is recognized.
is witness. It's the space of you are. That is the teacher of teachers. That is the one infinite creator manifest throughout all of manifestation. Thus then, like that, enjoy the peace and silence of the next 30 to 40 minutes. Although, that too, it's just a creation.
And remember the peace of self is the foundation. If we cannot rest in peace with ourselves, we can't do anything else without it being programmed. The rediscovery of our free will requires that we are able to be at peace, still content with ourselves as we are, whatever that may include in each moment.
And you may notice subtle tensions releasing. Some waves of discomfort may arise. Waves of comfort may arise in the body. As the mechanism, which is the body, which is the crystallization of the mind, because the body is nothing but the creature of the mind. It's the creature of the mind. It's the mind's pet. It's the mind's physicalized expression. And so when you allow the space for yourself, for the unmet layers of self, to arise, to be healed, to be met. The intention of allowance, the space of non-judgment, space of acceptance, is what will integrate those layers. And this includes the body. So it may release something, it may cough a little, maybe an itch, some shivers, or not, or none of these things. Don't create them. Just recognize if there is a sensation of release or a warmth or a shiver or a little itch in the throat or a little adjustment of the vertebrae. These kind of Small symptoms are the alterations, the releases of the body, the barfing up, if you will, the shedding of what was previously held unconscious and is now lovingly met in the space of open lucidity. And love arises, and the symptoms don't matter. They're just symptoms. They're just effects. And you'll also find that there's spaces in your body which feel very spacious. Spaces in the body that feel very open and relaxed and supple, like there is no resistance there. The current of consciousness, of life, moves and navigates freely and with harmony within those areas of the body or the aura. And you will find areas of the body that are perhaps more tense or dark or cloudy, if you will, where the current of life and consciousness meets a bit of a resistor if you will, a bit of a muddiness. Also allow attention to lovingly go to those places while staying open and relaxed. Don't get too focused on anything. This is about allowance. This is not about investigating. This is about being. This is not about doing. Keep relaxing, trusting, in the power of God, by simply relaxing the mind, giving space to all the bodies. And notice these cloudy components of the body that feel less spacious, less free, to uncoil themselves, to unwind themselves, like a snake unfurling itself, ready to go on its way to the next adventure, crawling out, out of its hole, out of its shelter. Allow the pockets of the mind and the body that have been kept secret or suppressed to gently, lovingly, and gradually, where possible, gradually be met and unwind.
and watch as great ease begins to enter those portions of the body. See how that spaciousness from the already spacious areas of the body begins to spread throughout all portions, all cells, all areas, all entities that make up the body. Allow that space of allowance to spread through the body. Allow the body, too, to be met as the creature of the mind, as the evidence of your suppressions. There it is, your body. Allow it to relax gradually. Allow it to be loved more and more bit by bit, here and now, all is well, all is okay, all is the Creator, all is you, all is allowed. And begin to enjoy that ease more and more, the space of allowance. Peace with self is the foundation for anything else. If you cannot be at peace and content with yourself as you are right now, then you have no free will to navigate into anything next or new. If you want the next phase of your life to be an epic explosion of bliss, an easeful stream of God-filled love, light and joy, then one has to come to terms with the isness of self, exactly as it is, here and now, allowing space for those portions of self which have been unrecognized, unmet, unwanted. Allow. Don't make a drama out of it. Calmly, restfully, forgivingly. Allow till space begins to take over the mind and ease begins to course through your veins. And God starts to fill your inspirations. Open that attitude of welcoming allowance. Open that heart sphere to those around you. Not to take on anything of someone else, that's never the point. Just to send out this field, this vibration, this intention of you are loved. Worry not where you are currently afraid to hold space for yourself, I will hold it for you. 
because I do know in that area of life that all is well, where you perhaps still fear that some form of lack may occur or have been. And then send out that intention of allowance, of forgiveness, of self, acknowledgement of self, proudness of self without pride, acceptance of self. Send that sphere out from your heart as a powerful ripple and intention to every individual that's part of this retreat. Let them know that all is well. They have not to worry about that thing, yes, that thing, that they're worried about. Whatever that thing is for them. It's most likely not that thing for you, you see. So like the protrusions of a piece of the puzzle, so too, do you have a space for those protrusions? So you can allow space where others perhaps fear that aspect of self. And you can receive the confidence from those who have already achieved that in the areas where you still have that thing that's not really real and you know it's not really real. But yet, there it is. Bothering you. Trying to scare you a little bit. So also receive the vibration, the confidence of those who have gone before you in this area that all is well for you too. Receive that love and offer that love as this unified field of allowance so that the entities of this room may indeed fit energetically into each other like the pieces of a puzzle forming then once again the blanket of union, which is the knowledge in the heart of each of you, that you are indeed inseparable from the Creator in all its glory, in all its infinitude, in all its abundance, in all its love and capacity to be with whatever arises. This is the space where nothing is shunned, where all is welcome. And where ultimately nothing is preferred over anything else. Which does not mean you should not have any preferences. does not mean you should not have any naturally occurring healthy, say, boundaries, even though you know it's an illusion. Let that love and respect for yourself also be palpable towards other selves. But it's a loving, welcoming space of being confident in what you are, what you represent, and what you deserve as a free agent of this creation. It's not a hostile space. It's not a defensive boundary at all. 
It's the healthy, clear knowledge. This is what I am. And I recognize this in you. I recognize this in me. And this divine right to be as I am and to hold my own space is entirely my own. You can partake in that if you can see this too. If you too respect this. If you too have come to a level of maturity where there can be, there can be a mutual recognition of the inherent validity of each component of self and the space for that to be and the responsibility we take to allow our triggers to be our own and others' triggers to be their own and to extend space for ourselves and others. To trust in this infinite intelligence that moves like the wind through a field of grass. Let this force move you, touch you, open you up. Let it inform you. Let it enlighten you. Let it awaken you. Let it make you feel truly okay with everything as it is. See how much peace can fill up your consciousness. See how much peace can fill you from within and outshine, outshine every other tendency or topic of concern. See how that peace can become stronger, if you will or better recognized. Just like you can get lost in a movie, get absorbed in drawing, doodling, writing, lovemaking, so too you can become intoxicated with a chosen frequency, whatever you choose. For now, let that be peace because the foundation, my friends, for anything in life, again, is peace and acceptance of self. To allow for all parts of the unmet self to be met with an intention of loving allowance so let this peaceful, loving allowance that all is well with you. No matter what arises, no matter what you feel, no matter what you think, no matter what you judge, make bigger the intention of peace than the intention of judgment. Emphasize and rest into become intoxicated, drunk with the intention of peace, the knowledge that all is well. And as you get lovingly, lucidly, awakenedly lost, or shall I say found, in peace.
notice how it takes care of everything else in your field for you. It's opening the floodgates to intelligent energy. Energy imbued with the intelligence of the Creator. Get lost in it. Find yourself at peace there, here, now. When will you be at peace? Why not now? Why be at peace after this has been accomplished or that has been achieved or this is no longer arising? <laughs> if you're waiting for a life without appearances before you choose to be at peace with who you are, my friends, you will be dead before you'll ever know peace. Human life is human life. It comes with whatever it comes with. Do not wait for liberation at the end of a long chain of never-ending experiences. One has to find it now. One has to decide upon peace now. It's the attitude that arises from the maturity that arises from the consistent endurance of suffering, pain, struggle, realizing that the only alternative is to decide upon your peace today. Because nobody else is going to grant it to you. There's no peace insurance in our government today. It is up to you to decide who you want to be, to decide how you wish to experience yourself. Remember that your free will is deeper than the level of the mental and emotional body. Meaning that whatever arises in the form of a thought or a story in your mind Consequently, conjuring up a series of feelings and discomforts, ripples. None of that has to determine your state of being. If something you really, really cared about was at stake, and the only way to keep that thing alive or existent would be to be at peace with whatever is right now. Otherwise, that thing would die or perish, or that person would die or perish. Then would you be able to choose peace with whatever is? Then would you be able to choose to not take the thoughts and emotions so seriously? To not be bothered by the feeling of being bothered? 
Now that is peace. Peace can be with or without disturbances. There is peace with or without emotions. But in either scenario, peace is peace. It has nothing to do with your emotions. It has nothing to do with your circumstances. Peace is peace. So why wait for it? Why wait for a clear slate, a blank slate of no emotions to identify peace? When peace can be determined by your free will right now. And peace is more than just peace. Peace holds a power that cannot be rivaled. And it plugs you in to the intelligence of the infinite. And out of it arises the skillful means to interact with each moment according to that highest intuition, that highest dance in union with all of creation. One can decide to be peaceful right now. One does not need permission from the emotions. You can wait for peace if you want to. But give me one emotional story in your past that granted you peace. Show me one trigger who emphasized that it was really okay for you to be at peace with it. Now, those would be nice emotional reactions. Oh, I'm triggered with the urgency to accept everything as it is. You trigger my peace. How dare you? Because of you, I'm at peace. Because of what you said, I feel really amazing right now. Trigger me peaceful. Sounds like the name of a Bob Dylan song. <laughs> Point being, don't wait for what you want. Be what you want right now. Not what you want to have. Because focusing on what you want to have is a form of waiting. You see that? It's still an excuse to not be what you want to be now. When you have that thing or that state that you want or that condition or circumstance or person or whatever it is, the money, when you have that thing that you want, what then are you that you so desperately want to be? Be that now without the thing and the thing will follow suit. Or not, but either way, you already attained what you really wanted out of that thing. And it's not a thing, it's a choice. And as I revisit all of my main teachings over the next two days or so, 
So we go through all these topics from the ground up, a clear, concise overview of all those main tools. And I'm excited for you to revisit them. I'm excited for us to revisit this. You'll get a chance to really remember how to create your reality without throwing yourself off course in the process of wanting things. A powerful creator does not wait, does not want, does not complain. I ask you to face yourself right now Search your system for where you still complain. And just be really lovingly firm with yourself and say, no fucking more. I didn't say no more fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's only for the really advanced students. <laughs> who are completely happy with themselves as they are. No fucking more complaints. Make this statement, this commitment to yourself. All right. Here's one, here's one thing to really understand. To make a firm commitment to self does not in any way, shape or form contradict allowing all to be as it is. You get that? If not fully, that's okay, but begin to get this. Learn to navigate freely between both spaces until the seeming difference between both spaces has been bridged entirely. And there's no distinction between loving oneself and changing oneself. Between allowing oneself to be as oneself is and making a commitment to alter one's direction, trajectory, attitude, until the intention for change is so immediate and so loved and so confidently held within the space of allowance that there is no judgment arising at the moment of the commitment to change, to alter, to grow, to evolve, to implement something you know works better, to increase your integrity towards self and other self, to increase your purity towards the Creator, this creation. But today make the commitment that thou shalt not complain. Thy, thou, you. And it's powerful when we do this. It takes so much power back into our system. So much of our free will is lost. Complaining. Complaints are nothing but holding other people's thoughts as if they are your own free will based opinions. Again, I'm not saying you shouldn't have any preferences. Again, a paradox to reconcile here is that you can perfectly well have preferences, but not complain. It's really time to grow out of this basic mindset of this or that. If I can't have this, then I can't be happy. If I have this, I can't have that. If I can't have that, I can't have this. If I'm this, I cannot be that. If I'm that, I cannot be this. None of that can really exist in a mature mindset. It doesn't allow for growth. Not really. One has to embrace the paradox of life. And as some of the Buddhist traditions state, paradox and confusion are the gatekeepers to enlightenment. If you can't get past those gatekeepers, forget about enlightenment. If paradox still causes confusion of the negative kind, of the limiting kind, 
rather than the mystery kind, the awe-inspiring kind of confusion, the I don't know, the open-hearted attitude, the surrender, the humility. But if paradox still causes the confusion of, no, this can't be, you said this, and now you say that, <laughs> then forget about enlightenment. Although there is no such event necessarily as enlightenment, because it's not really an occurrence, for lack of a better word, after enlightenment, <laughs> Paradox is all you know, is all you are. You will not fit in anyone's box anymore. Neither will you want to. And where you still try to, you have something more to look at. They are the gatekeepers. You can tell who's ready or not for the truth of existence, the truth of their own existence, by seeing whether or not they are at least willing to embrace that paradox does not mean contradiction, it just means they do not understand from their limited, linear, mind-based point of view. That's one gatekeeper. Confusion is the other. Can confusion be okay? Can you allow confusion? Can you not be distracted by confusion? Can you not demand an answer when you're in a state of confusion? Can you transmute confusion into mystery? Instead of, I'm confused, how does this work? Why is this this way? Answer me now. Instead go, ah, it's mystery. <laughs> I find myself in more of the mystery. I'm treading unfamiliar grounds. I'm walking heart wide open, bold as a sparrow. into the unknown. Completely different experience. One will not pass beyond the gatekeeper of confusion. The other attitude will, and it will carry you decisively into enlightenment, or more of it anyway. If we cannot embrace not knowing, how will we be at peace with ourselves? How much do we really know? And again, remember, how much of the entire infinite creation, with its billions of galaxies, each with millions of stars, some billions of stars, each, of these billions, billions of galaxies. Holy fuck! How much of that space, experience, creation, color palette, form arrangements, organic life, intelligent life, static life, how much of that do you think is man-made? <laughs> yeah. What percentage of creation is governed by the mind of man? Now, what percentage of your day is filled with that? 
how much of your attention and intention and life force goes out exploring and chasing things or ideas made by the mind of men. And if you don't feel pretty stupid by now, <laughs> you're not getting the analogy. And it's fine to be stupid, we're all stupid. It's good to realize, or as Anurag says, you're always full of shit, and it's good to acknowledge that. Because it allows us to grow and learn and stay humble and purify ourselves. But we have to be okay with that and transmute confusion into mystery and awe and inspiration. It's inspiring to be confused. In fact, you're not confused. You're just running into something you can't comprehend. Isn't that what you want? Your most magical moments in life are made of that stuff. And yet you want to eliminate it with all your might. Because it may, it may cause you discomfort, uncertainty, or death perhaps. So we lock up, we fear, and we hold on to that point zero zero billions of zeros, billions of zeros, billions of zeros times billions of zeros, one <laughs> and a half percent. So we hold on to that, and then we wonder why we're not happy. Why we're not in tune with creation. Why we're so afraid. Imagine holding on to the point zero billions and billions and billions of zeros, one and a half percent of creation, holding on to that and trying to fight off the other ninety nine point billions and billions and billions of nine and a half percent. chances of winning that battle are slim. So why even try? You've already lost. You've already lost the game. As soon as you were born, you lost the game of life. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> now you can relax and have fun. You can open the heart, live adventurously, fearlessly, embracing the mystery that comes with a nonlinear life. A life that's not set in stone. A life that's not based on achieving and accumulating certainty. But a life instead steeped in mystery and magic, nonlinear, the unexpected, the unafraid. And we all have the unafraid level within ourselves and we can contact it. But not through thinking. It's through an act of surrender, an act of faith, an act of meditation, an act of a leap of faith an act of trust within oneself, the Creator's creation, and the intelligence that we know instinctively governs all things, like the wind moving the blades of grass, like a uniform blanket. There is only one organism in creation, and it is creation itself. Do not separate yourself from this harmony, because you'll pinch off your access point to this infinite abundance of intelligence, wisdom, flow, synchronicity. Your physical mind is not designed to know what's going to happen. Your physical mind is designed to know what's happening now within your little sphere 
a physical life. If you let that steer your life, then your life will consist of nothing but a sequence of the five senses experiencing sense perceptions in a way that it can control so that it's not ever having to be surprised by the mystery of creation. And then we wonder why good things don't happen to us. Because every time that the lottery rings the doorbell, we don't open the door. Every time God gives us a call, which is all the time, we don't answer. Oh, it might be my mom, my dad. <laughs> credit agencies. All the time you're getting a ring from the infinite mystery, a call, literally a call, a calling, a mission. Mr. Hunt, should you choose to accept this? No! Got to water my flowers today. Haven't watered my flowers yet. No time for a mission. Got to mow the lawn every Sunday. So scan your system, your field, the field of your mind and your emotions and your bodily energies. Face yourself lovingly and be honest about where you still hold on, where you still complain and where your priority is still certainty and security over mystery and magic. over love and allowance, judgment and certainty over love and allowance. Love knows no judgment, no judgment whatsoever. Imagine yourself in a space of non-judgment to self or other self. This is the foundation, this is the basics. If we can't be stable in a state of being at peace with ourselves, in the stillness of just being, then how in the world are you going to create an epic life that embraces mystery and uncertainty without that confidence, that connection to the trust within oneself? How are you going to honor your calling in life? And you're right. You're right to fear change if you don't know the changeless. If you don't know the confidence and the stability of yourself at a profound level, if you're not at peace with yourself as you are, deeply in allowance, in okayness with yourself as you are, then of course change will disturb you. Of course, because that's what you're holding on to. The mind or the consciousness is like a monkey, it'll grab on to whatever it focuses on. If you focus on the peace with all that is, you will develop a conviction, a confidence in the peace with all that is. Now things can come and go, you're not reaching for those things. You are stable 
more and more stable, more and more at peace with what is. This is the only space from which you can become the creator. Again, remember Ra's three main steps for the adept. Adept is another word for seeker or student of truth. Step one, know yourself. This means offer the self with space to be seen and be transparent and truthful about what's going on. Do not judge what's going on. See, acknowledge what is happening within yourself, within your psyche. Acknowledge the attempts to manipulate, the attempts to distort, project, change the patterns, the tendency to feel victimized, whatever it may be. Know yourself deeply. Know the details of self. Witness the patterns. See yourself as a really clear other person would see you if they had a chance to spend a few months with you. Now, what they would write down as an objective observer, you would not like. Or at least not all of it, if they're being honest. That's okay. You have to become okay with that. If you can't be okay with that, with your faults and your flaws and your distortions, then there's nowhere for you to go beyond this point. So you got to make this choice, my friends. You have to make this choice that you will see and accept yourself, which is the second step. One is know yourself. Step two, accept yourself. This is where the love, the connectedness, the stability, the contact point is accomplished. The contact point to God, to your divinity, is accomplished in acceptance of self. That's where the love and the forgiveness and the stability comes from. That's where that confidence comes from. Now there's this stable trampoline, if you will, of capacity to hold and allow experiences to come and go, to learn efficiently, to be unafraid of your own fears. Now the third step may be begun. Just become the creator. That's the fun part. Everyone comes for that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, become the creator. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not full of shit. What are you talking about? You're full of shit. <laughs> Step one, know yourself. You can't do that if you don't slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Stillness. Become still and see what arises. It's that simple. Trust me, all your shit will come up. <laughs> you don't have to conjure it up. You just have to be quiet. <laughs> Takes no effort for the unseen self to arise. You just have to slow down and become quiet. As soon as we slow all the way down, become still. Whatever needs to be seen is right there in your face, lovingly, beautifully, perfectly tailored to what you can handle in that moment. It's so intelligent. When we become still, when we slow down, enter into a space with ourselves as we are, with the intention to meet ourselves, honestly, truthfully. The first thing that arises is the most important, the biggest chunk of unacknowledged self that needs to be integrated. <coughs> Known and accepted, in other words. Integration means know yourself and accept yourself. And with that also comes a greater understanding of why you did it, why you believe it, etc.
and it's perfectly tailored to what you can handle in that moment. So don't flinch. Don't sell yourself short. You become quiet, an emotion arises. Don't run from it immediately. Give yourself some credit. You're still here after 40, 50, 60 years. Or especially impressive, you're still here after 30 years. There are 20, some of you. Don't run away. I mean, you've, you've already endured and experienced and processed and understood and decided so much in your life. Why fear that biggest chunk of unacknowledged self that arises in stillness? When you have all the capacity, all the confidence, all the space that you need to allow that, to understand it, to give it space. That is the foundation. Know yourself, accept yourself. When that foundation is built, it is like a trampoline that allows us to skyrocket into becoming the creator, playing with parallel realities, parallel timelines, vibrational frequencies, attracting things simply by thinking them, increasing our vibration, the density, the concentration of the light in our consciousness, becoming blissed out within this very existence, shining our light, activating our light bodies, all these fun things can begin to emerge. You can become the creator. But if you don't know yourself, and you don't acknowledge yourself, and you don't accept yourself, if you don't slow down enough, then what you're taking with you into your well-intentioned journey to become the creator is a backpack full of lead that smells like shit. So as we explore the principles of becoming the creator, which of course are exciting because it's what you are, it's what you're born of, it's what you're made of, it's what you're capable of. And it's your birthright to inherently understand the gifts, the capacities of consciousness, the magical tools of being a sentient free agent of the creator. But return frequently, promise me this, please, that you return frequently to the space of stillness where self can be met, acknowledged, and integrated. Where you can explore the space of being unafraid of your fears. Where you can increase that conviction, that confidence, that trust. Okay? Aye, aye? Thank you. Then again, exude this space also to others. Not in a cocky kind of way, like, let me help you. <laughs> let me hold space for you, dear. <laughs> and become all theatrical about being really spiritual. No, just in silence, in gratitude, in humility, without even offering it verbally, you are it. If you are it, you don't have to offer it. You don't have to acknowledge it. You don't have to say it. Imagine how annoying it would be. I'm holding space for all of you. I'm not going to go shake each of your hand. Hi, I'll hold space for you. Don't worry. I'm really good at this. I faced a lot of my fears. I can hold this space for you. <laughs> Next. Hi, my name is Bentinho. I've hosted over 30 retreats for the past 10 years, and I'm really good at holding space. Don't worry, whatever comes up for you, okay? Don't worry, sweetheart, I got you. I'm gonna hold space for you, okay? Okay, hold on, hold on. Hi, dear. Hi. Hi, my name is Bentinho. Yeah. Yeah, you can, I have my website. I got a business card right here, okay? I'm really, really great at holding space for people. I've practiced it a lot, okay? 
So don't worry, anything that comes up, I'm gonna hold space for you, okay? It's gonna be me, okay, me. I also got a really pretty smile because I've practiced smiling a lot, yeah? I'm gonna hold space for you. Don't worry, darling, it's all good. I'm gonna hold space for you, just for you, okay? <laughs> but also for you. <laughs> a behavior like that is a clear sign that you're not it. It's time to meet the unmet self in you that needs the validation from others that then disguises itself as service to others. Service to others is so pure, it's so silent, no one will even know you're being of service, okay? That's when you're it. You don't have to say it. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to wear it around your neck like a fucking Christmas tree. <laughs> It's July, for Christ's sake. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Just be natural. <laughs> the greatest gift you can give to another is a gift they don't know they received. a gift they even think they have facilitated entirely for themselves. How beautiful is that? Who needs the credit if you're God? If you're a separate person, if you're still identified as the individual body-mind who needs the recognition and validation, you'll make sure they know that it came from you. I was being generous with you. <laughs> You morsel. <laughs> Look at my grace and my capacity to be generous with someone like you. <laughs> be natural. Don't make a big deal out of it. Stuff the theatrics. Spirituality has gotten such a bad reputation because of the religious abuse side of things and in more recent times because of the theatricalness of the New Age folk. Okay, if we didn't have the abuse and dominance of religion and the abuse of leadership in general and we didn't have the theatrics of the New Age people of the last 50 years Humanity would be better off because we'd all be drinking juices right now at McDonald's without making a big deal out of it. McDonald's would have been a juice bar, <laughs> naturally, without trying to be. Your average truck stop would sell Crystals. The politicians would do meditation circles together. <laughs> Trump and Hillary will ho would hold satsang. <laughs> oh boy, that would be the funniest thing. <laughs> Can we, we should reenact this. Trump and Hillary holding satsang. We should get some good wigs and some good makeup prosthetics. I would love to wear Trump prosthetics and hold satsang. Now that would go viral and get the message out.
Take a deep breath all at once and just relax and sigh. Feel good in your own skin, feel comfortable. And for the next hour, I ask you to be quiet unless you're part of the team and you need to discuss something or you're being interviewed or something. Other than that, just keep your quiet space for another hour until 2 p.m. And at 2 p.m., feel free to begin interacting and also feel free to obviously not interact and stay within the quiet space of self. But for the next hour, see what in you is begging to be met with greater awareness, with greater love, with greater acceptance. See what portions of your psyche want to be integrated, want to be loved and acknowledged. I'll be back here at 3 p.m. We will have no evening sessions session tonight. Um, there's time needed, quite a bit of time needed for the setup, for the ecstatic dance, for those who are interested in that. Um, but I'll just continue uh, by myself from 3 to about 6. And this is when we'll begin going through some of the topics. Again, to refresh your memory and my own. <laughs> Some of the topics that um, are the key components of my work that I've addressed over the course of the last 10 years. I'll be going through some of them, some of which I haven't addressed in quite some time publicly. So I'll have new angles on them perhaps as well. And some of you may not even know about these things yet. There's some topics I wrote down are enlightenment, the absolute empowerment, the emotional guidance system, Law of Attraction, The Art of Changing, Being of Service, Calling Work, Parallel Realities, How Time Does Not Exist, which leads into talk about timelines and parallel realities, how time does not exist and parallel realities coexist. And it's a very exciting topic for those who are not familiar with it. When we break it down in a certain way, it's a mind fuck and it really opens you to a whole new world of possibility. And if you're ready for that, it's really freaking cool. And I know many of you could give testimonies of how you've used that and created magic with it. Okay? How things that shouldn't happen have happened. <laughs> things that shouldn't have happened according to Newton have happened. Lack beliefs, how the only cause of suffering is lack beliefs, bring it back down to that basics. And again, that leads into the emotional guidance system as well. And there's other topics, but some of these I want to revisit. Um, so the next session from 3 to 6, I'll revisit some of these topics. So see you at 3, stay quiet until 2 please. And see what in you wants to be met, and just do that. Meet that within yourself. Hold on for one more minute for some announcements. Hey, so um, we have an info desk over by the bathrooms over here and just want to let you guys know that you can buy tokens over there and also a yoga mat if you would like it. Um, and then... Oh, and just to reiterate, the ecstatic dance with Franz Arati is at 9 p.m. tonight. That's when it starts. Oh, and the lost and found is also at the info desk. So if you lost anything, you can go there and find it. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs>